Let's talk about what matter is made of. Well, matter can is anything that composes uh, has mass and occupies space, and we know that it has a volume and it has a mass. So uh, matter can be broken up, broken down into two main categories. It can be broken down to pure substances or mixtures. Now, what are pure substances? Well, pure substances can be broken down into two smaller categories, which are elements and compounds. Let's talk about elements. Elements are things or uh, molecules that have only one type of atom. So for example, we have um, oxygen gas. Oxygen gas is an element, so we call that oxygen. Oxygen has two oxygen atoms combined together to form a diatomic molecule. This diatomic molecule means that it's two atoms of the same kind forming that element. Uh, but elements doesn't have to come in a diatomic form. Well, I mean, there are many types of diatomic molecules or elements out there. There's hydrogen gas, there's nitrogen gas, chlorine gas, fluorine gas, right? Those are like diatomic. Elements can also exist in a single atom by itself. For example, all these noble gases, they are also elements. Argon, neon, so they only, each element, uh, elemental gas of argon is just one atom uh, or, or one particle of argon just floating around in the atmosphere, all right? Um, but elements don't necessarily have to be a single particle or a diatomic particle. It can also be like sulfur. Sulfur has eight sulfur atoms combined together to form a sulfur element. So it can be also that way. Uh, but elements can also get really, really, really big, like diamonds. Diamonds or graphite are basically lots of carbon uh, joined together, all right, to form this big giant structure or lattice structure. All right, so these are examples of elements. What about compounds? Compounds are any matter that compose of two or more types of atoms. So for example, we have water. Water is CH2O. So we have the hydrogens, two hydrogens combined with one oxygen. Now compounds, the composition of a compound will always remain the same no matter what you do to that compound. So for example, water in the solid space or solid state will be H2O. When you boil water, melt the water, ice to liquid to become water, liquid water, the chemical composition of water will still be H2O. If you boil that water and turn the liquid water into water vapor, the chemical composition will also be H2O. So no matter what the physical state of these compounds are, the chemical composition of comp all compounds will remain the same. So there are more examples of compounds out there. Methane is CH4. So all methane, no matter it's liquid in some outer space planet or gas on this planet, the chemical composition will still be CH4. Ammonia, a very popular uh, precursor to fertilizers and bombs. The chemical composition of that is NH3. So no matter what you do with compounds, you boil them, you melt them, you freeze them, the compositions will remain the same. Let's talk about mixtures. Mixtures are divided into three subcategories for our level, for our purposes. First type of mixture are alloys. Alloys are simply a group of metallic elements that are bonded in a metallic way, metallic form. And in those, in those 
um, uniform met metallic elements, you have a few of other metallic elements imposed into it. For example, here I have lots of purple circles, and infused in that purple circles in rows, in neat orders and rows and columns, I have two pink elements. This is just a simple representation of what an alloy is. So alloys come in many, many forms, right? We have brass, we have steel, we have bronze. These are all alloys because what we do with it is that, like steel, we have iron and we infuse it with bits of carbon and other stuff. So there are many types of steel grades and there could be many types of things that iron has been infused with to make it stronger. So alloys usually, when they make alloys, the purpose of it is to make it last longer, make it stronger, and uh, make it more useful for human use. Uh, the second type of mixture is called solutions. Solutions are pretty simple. The whole thing, the whole solution, the whole water system will kind of look homogeneous all around or homogeneous all around. That means you can't really distinguish anything from that solution. It looks uniform throughout. So things like Coke, the, the fizzy drink that we drink, that's a solution because no matter how you turn in the swirl, you look at it, it it's just dark and black. Seawater can also be considered a solution. We have lots of dissolved salts into that's dissolved into water. All right? Drinking water, the water that we use for drinking, is also a solution because it has minerals inside. Can you imagine that? Without those minerals in our drinking water, we would literally drown if we drink too much pure water. All right. Now for the final type of mixture, we have suspensions or colloids. Suspens uh, these suspensions are basically what it sounds like. You have itty bitty bits of bigger, larger particles suspended in that solution or in that water system. All right. So we know lots of suspensions or colloids in a real life example. For example, ketchup. If you let the ketchup to stay on the tabletop for too long, you need to shape the ketchup so that you uh, move the suspension particles, the suspended particles, or the colloid particles more uniformly throughout the um, suspension or colloid. Mustard also settles down if you leave it out for too long. Milk also settles out if you leave it out for too long. Juices, juices are suspensions because when you make fresh juice and you just leave it in a glass for a couple of minutes or a few minutes, you can see a frothy layer on the top and then clear liquid at the bottom. Well, semi-clear liquid at the bottom. All right, so those are what substances and mixtures are. Now I want to talk to you about the cooling and heating curves of pure substances and mixtures. How do we... How do we know if an uh, unknown um, matter, an, if you collected an unknown matter, how do you know if it's a pure substance or if it's a mixture? Well, it all depends on the cooling and heating curve. The cooling and heating curve has a y-axis as the temperature and the x-axis as time. Now, if you have a pure substance, a pure solid substance, and you begin to heat it up, the temperature of that you use, that will you, that you will detect when you put it, when you heat up that pure substance in a the thermometer, right? The, the temperature will go up as you heat it up, and then suddenly you see the temperatures staying still for a long period of time. And in that period of time, you begin to see the solid becoming liquid. All right. So in this moment, during the heating pump. Uh, during the heating phase, we call this an in-phase in -phase transition, all right? The in-phase part of the diagram. And this is where this, the substance you have still remains a solid. And here, this part where the temperature stagnates is because it's changing phase. 
So we call this a phase change. Phase change. Here is the phase changing from solid to liquid. And then once everything becomes a liquid, the temperature will rise up again. And then when it becomes from liquid to a, a gas, uh, it will stagnate out for another phase change. And then suddenly everything vaporizes and the temperature will go up again. So this is a um, unique heating cooling curve for any pure substances that changes from solid, liquids, gas, or it can be done in reverse. So if you have a gas of pure substance, you cool it, it will go through an in-phase change, like so, and when it becomes liquid, from gas to liquid, it will go through a phase change. And then when it's liquid, you go cool down some more, and then when it solidifies from liquid to solid, it will go through another phase change, and then you, you can freeze it some more, okay? But when you have a mixture, what's going to happen? Now, what you're going to see is that when you heat up the substance, things are not going to go through this nice, jagged curve. It's not going to do that. What's going to happen is that you're going to see the curve go up, go up, and go up, like that. So the, the phase change is not very obvious because the, the point, the boiling point or the melting point range is very, very high. The boiling point or melting point range is very, very high. So like for our drinking water, when we boil up regular drinking water, you can see water vapor coming out um, really about maybe 80 degrees, uh, 90 degrees and so on, and, and it will continue to uh, vaporize up to 105 degrees or so, something like that. So uh, that's proof that our drinking water is a solution. So there you go. Categories of matter and its unique properties that you can determine its purity.